know, like there's people out there that, that can go and dive straight into the deep end and go full on keto straight away, but usually dependent on background, where they've been, what they've previously been doing, potentially what their goals are right. as well and what their lifestyle has looked like in the past. But with the years of experience of coaching people, you and I have this sort of common belief that it's a great area is just to start by cutting right. carbs. So right. tell us why you think that's the best approach. Well, first thing is there's, there's actually two. What, one thing is, is the, the, it's funny because I'm going to say this in the nicest way, but you know, most RDA, the, the recommended daily allowance, I'm not on board with, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, Wow. But I don't know, most people know that the, the RDA's recommended daily allowance for carbohydrates is only 150 grams a day. So it's not very high, right? But people consume that one meal uh, or they'll consume 10 times that in a day. So the most important reason when people think of keto, and if you start looking at the ketogenic diet or even a low carb diet, they might, they also might be hearing you can eat high fat. Well, one thing we know for sure is fat and carbs don't mix well together. So if you have a lot of carbs, you don't want to have a lot of fat. But if you eat a lot of fat, you don't want to have a lot of carbs. And so what happens with people is that they get started in this journey and maybe they don't quite understand what low carb is. Maybe they slip up here and there or they're not low enough carbs and they started increasing their fat intake and they're finding like, I'm not getting the results that somebody else got. And so for me, the most important thing you do when you're starting this low carb life or a keto life is to really understand and learn how to go low carb. And, and remember, everybody's low carb is going to be different. Some people can get into ketosis and burn fat very efficiently with under 50 grams of carbs. If you're athletic, you might even get under 100 grams of carbs a day and still get the response that it might take somebody that, is, that needs to get under 20 grams of carbs a day. So what I always start people out with is like, I'd rather start you low and get you a result and then work you back up to find the, the place that you can live your life in. And, um, and I have a simple rule um, is, if you needed to lose more than 20 pounds for more than two years, you're probably going to want to be below 20 or well, 20 total carbs, 20, you know, we, that's net carbs, I guess, um, or under 30 total carbs a day. So that's usually my starting point for people. But I always say, Hey, take the first two to three weeks, get low carb. And then once we do that, we can talk more about how to in increase the fat intake. And I know a lot, a lot of people to start with as well. They're like, well, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Is it net carbs? Is it total carbs? Right, it, right. And, and that in itself can just really confuse people. So without going too super scientific -y, geeky and all that sort of stuff, can you talk about the difference between total carbs, net carbs, and, and why one might focus on one rather than the yeah. other? It's really a personality trait that I tell people that you focus on. It's based on your person uh, more than anything else. Um, so what it is, is the net carb is your total carbohydrates minus the fiber. Now, some of you strict people out there, you might know some crazy keto people out there. They might even, they might tell you, well, some fibers can do this, this, and this. Just ignore them. Uh, they're, they live in an island by themselves. Okay, just ignore them. It may matter, but relatively for most of you, it's not going to matter. So that's the net carb. That's what, that's the, because fiber doesn't typically uh, increase your, your glucose or have an insulin response because it doesn't increase your glucose. So you're fine. And that, that, that carb is neutral. Just like a keto friendly sweeteners would be carbohydrates that you can subtract out. Like yetherol is a sweetener or stevia is a sweetener that doesn't spike your glucose. So therefore it doesn't count against you in this journey of being low carb. So you can subtract those out of the carbs and that's your, that would be your net carbs. That's the, the, that's the, the net carbs is the carbs that are going to impact your glucose. Total carbs is the amount of carbs you consume. And what I tell people to do is if, if you're a psychologically kind of st a st a stress monster and you're like overanalyze stuff, it's sometimes better just to go with the big number and not try to like be perfect. Because what I can tell you is whatever you think you should be at, it probably won't be exactly where you should be. It's you have to find your, your, your way. Um, so total carbs is all the carbs added up. So when I start with people with co total carbs, I might just say stay under 100 grams a day, total carbs. Um, you're focused on high quality, low carb vegetables. You're focused on high quality proteins. Like that might be the starting point, but what's going to happen is you're going to see me on TikTok doing a recipe and it's going to show you this crazy dessert that says it's low carb. It has a lot of fiber in it. And now you have to do the mathematical problem. So it really comes down to psychology. And then once you go from the total carbs to hundred, I might go total carbs under 50 and then see how you're doing. So you can choose either method. 
um, it comes down to really you being committed to the journey to learn how it works for you and where you need to fall in line with, with, with the food choices that you choose. Yeah, I love that. Like, you know, my background more so is sort of the fitness realm of things. And I love that approach because you get the, you know, the super geeky engineers or the, uh, not that I ever had it, but like a um, a, a space rocket. I, what do you call it? The, I, I know uh, a few rocket scientists. Rocket scientists. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. And they want to know every single piece of information. And for those people, sure, go. If that's what floats your boat, go for it. But I think, you know, my basic approach in everything that I do is dumb it down so a child could understand right. it. If a child can understand it, most of the time an adult can understand it, right? So I think some of the best things I've had with experience with coaching people as well is not so much focusing on numbers, but like you said, let's coach people and teach people what is good food, what is right. good substitutes for those carbohydrates that they're so used to in the past. Because if I attach a number to it and you're either too high or too low, then people automatically feel like they're right. losing. Oh right. my God, I didn't hit that exact number. Right. Exact that, number, are you kidding me? The calculators out there, that's why if you haven't got a chance to grab our cookbook because we actually have this really, just a simple guide. Like it's a simple trade off, an easy way to make some adjustments. But um, I'm not a big fan of calculators. And the reason why is that if you were to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, which I don't do anymore, uh, but if you were to do that, you have to do a $10,000 DEXA scan to scan your whole body. We have to analyze your basal metabolic rate. We have to we have to break everything down to make it so it's perfect. And then guess what? In two months, it's gonna change. So it's it's not a done, it's it's gonna change, it's gonna evolve. I mean, and that's the process of what we're talking about here is that is that we wanna keep it as simple as possible. And so I think if most people would start their journey to stay under 100 grams of carbs a day for two, three weeks, and know that it's a journey. Now I'm saying like you might be competitive and you want to go a little lower and then move to 50 and not even do the net carbs and not try not to do the math and add it up. You're going to start seeing results, especially if we can do some strategies like intermittent fasting and, and maybe some other tools that we have to help you with the ketogenic effect. So that can help you get the benefits of ketones without actually, you know, being crazy on the, on the keto diet. And once again, very, very specific to the goals right. that someone's trying to achieve, right? Like sports versus general population versus someone that's, you know, trying to conquer an autoimmune disease. Right. So, yeah. yeah, very specific. But I, I like that general um, sort of uh, general rule of under 100 grams to start right. with because we're setting them up for success. So share with us your three top alternatives because I know, I know so many people are like, well, this is my favorite. What do I do? Right, this is my right. favorite. What do I do? So give us your three top favorite alternatives. What's funny is, is I'm a pizza nut, um, but most people don't eat pizza like every day. So <laughs> I grew up in Minnesota. So they're, they're my two number one favorites. I'm going to give you my two and then I'll, I'll, well, I'll give you my two top favorites and then I'm going to give you some other ones. But, but I love spaghetti and I like chili. I grew up in Minnesota. So that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal to me, my spaghetti. And I've tried nearly every spaghetti noodle out there in the planet. I mean, you name it, I've probably tried 20 years of doing this. My favorite is, is cauliflower rice with spaghetti. It just is, right? But you got miracle noodles. You have um, palomini noodles. You do, um, I also don't eat wheat. So the, there is some low-carb wheat uh, with wheat in it, noodles that actually probably taste better. But I do cauliflower. That's my favorite thing. So in our household, just so you guys know, our kids aren't full-blown keto. They may have a rice noodle with spaghetti sauce, right? Um, so that's my one little trade-off. You can use obviously cauliflower rice for rice, which works really, really, really well. Uh, my other favorite thing is, I, this is a secret. This is one of my favorite recipes is um, I do a chili. I made it this weekend and it's a huge hit. Like people love it and you never feel bloated or gassy from it. And what I use is I use turnip root for the, for the uh, beans. So I replaced the beans because you get the same texture. It tastes exactly the same, but no heavy bean gas and no very still relatively low carb. Now, depending on how many bowls you eat, if you're full blown keto, you might go a little above because there is tomatoes in that. And, there, and there's tomatoes in both of them, by the way. Um, so those are my two biggest alternatives. I would say my third alternative would be, I don't eat bread, so I'm just not gonna go there. Uh, I've been away from that for a long time. So if you're a bread person, that's just too bad for uh, it, from my coaching side of things. I would say my alternative, huh, that's a 
a good third. I don't know. I, I just do vegetables a lot of vegetables. <laughs> I do a lot of vegetables and protein. I, what's your favorite alternative? That's funny because I actually I, I eat the same stuff, so I'm pretty I'm pretty boring. So I'm a pizza guy, definitely you are pizza as guy. well. And just so most people listening know that I I am more animal based than I am plant based, and I'm not against a plant based diet. I've just done lots of testing on myself, and and I find that. Vegetables are just not a high priority for me. And I'm not saying that's for everybody, guys, right. but it's what works for me. So I love the, the chicken-based pizza. Oh. And then I basically just chuck on some cheese and some more meat. And that's about it with a I've, I've been wanting to make that. So it's it's chicken ground. Like it's, I, we can talk about it. Can you post that recipe and get it to me? Because I want to make that. I've, I've been, I've played with a lot of pizza. I have, but it's like, you don't make, I don't make pizza that very often. And uh, so sometimes I just go to Costco and I literally eat the cheese and meat off, off the top and I just throw away the crust. Ah, I've been doing that for a long time. And then one the other day was like, you know, like just nacho chips or chips in general. Uh, I saw it on this group, actually. It was just melted cheese with a jalapeno dropped in the top. Cook it, melt it, sit it to the side, let it dry, and you've got these beautiful cheese crisps. Oh, that's good. That's Perfect. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I believe, uh, guys, we're going to chuck in a little document that explains car carbs, net carbs.